we saw it in person, water got above the roof. That thing still had water in it. So recently with Hurricane Ida absolutely blasting the East Coast with many feet of water in some locations, it resulted in a whole lot of flood cars out of New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, all the way up to the Southeast. And even you get a lot of flood cars in Texas and Louisiana. These coastal areas get nailed every time, uh, you know, rain pours a little too much or the ocean rises a little too high as we know. So my brother and I decided to fly out to the Northeast to go look at these cars in person to find these diamonds in the rough. See if we can find some cars that really don't have much damage and that we can turn key, start using for a huge discount. Some of these cars go for 50% off retail, sometimes even more, as I'll give a couple examples here. Uh, we got one quite a ways off retail. We looked through hundreds of cars at these Hopart auctions and insurance auto auctions. Uh, people got to remember that when these cars get totaled, they go to insurance companies and insurance companies write a, writes a check and says, okay, it's not worth fixing. And oftentimes when there's thousands of claims all in the same week, insurance companies will just write off all the cars that uh, claims get open re re regarding a flood or a hurricane, something like that. So a lot of these cars end up going to auction. I'm sure some get fixed, but so many will just be sent off to auction, sometimes without even really looking at them or getting a formal quote. They just send them to auction to be sold. And of course, they go to the next buyer to hopefully fix them up and get rebuilt titles and then drive them on the road once they repair them and do what's needed to get them going again. So my brother and I started on our quest up through the Northeast in New Jersey. And that was one of the spots that got hammered pretty good, especially outside New York City. They got slammed. Like some of those cars were under, I've heard, 10 feet of water. There was a Ford GT that sold for half price, but that was fully submerged. There was 992 Turbo S's, even possibly a Lexus LFA, dare I say. That I believe got some water in it too. So some crazy cars that maybe were just sitting in a garage or at the repair shop or somewhere else out in a parking lot. And if water rises, you know, they can quickly be totaled out. So we started in New Jersey, all sorts of crazy cars there at the first lot, you know, Aston Martins, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, anything you can imagine was there. And at that first lot, nothing immediately was a hero. Uh, we saw a gated 360. We were really thinking about bidding on that one. We saw it in the pictures on the Copart listing and we thought this could be a good one. You know, maybe some, maybe somebody won't see it's a gated manual and we can get a steal the deal on this. Not quite, we saw it in person, water got, above the roof. That thing still had water in it. That was a no-go. We tried to jump start it, see if it would start. Absolutely not. So many warning lights, the car was not happy. That's probably just gonna be a parts car unless somebody can really work some magic. There was also a DB11 there. Uh, that one wouldn't start either. So something wasn't happy with those electronics. But finally, we moved on to the next slot up to uh, New York area. And there we found a couple couple winners and a couple of which we came away with. So once again, just as far as the eye could see flooded cars, a couple of these auctions actually rent out airstrips. Like they have thousands of cars they need to put somewhere. Their lots cannot hold that many cars. They need to go rent temporary space. So sometimes they'll just get huge dirt lots and sometimes they will rent out airports full of thousands of flooded salvage cars ready to be sold to the highest bidder. Luckily, we were the high bidder on a couple. So let me tell you about them. The first one was a big win. It actually just arrived uh, back home in Arizona and we just started going through it and it is way nicer than we expected. So it's a 2018 Maserati Gran Turismo. Nice car, it's the facelift with the new bumper, the new screen and those cars are worth a decent amount of money. I think the cheapest one that year in mileage is maybe around $75,000 with a clean title. Okay, sounds about right for a car that retailed for 140 k a few years ago. We really like the Maserati Gran Turismo overall. We know them quite a bit inside and out and we know how to get to the battery when it runs out of juice. If you didn't know, it's actually in the trunk, but to get to the trunk, it's an it's a electronic trunk. So you need to have battery life to get to the battery. So what do you do if your battery's dead? You have to go through the emergency release. Well, guess what? A lot of these auctions don't know where the emergency release is. So they simply list these cars 
for sale and they say, hey, it won't start, it won't run, it's a non-running drive and we don't know the mileage because the gauges won't light up. We can't get to the battery. So obviously when you don't know the mileage on the car, you don't know if it runs and drives, it scares away a lot of bidders. So you're able to get some crazy good deals, way cheaper than a car that's a run and drive in a flood. Obviously one that's not described as running is gonna go for far less than one that says it runs and drives just fine. So with this Maserati, it was a non-run and drive. They described it as, as having engine damage. I really don't know why they said engine damage. The, the boot, the intake boot was off. So maybe they looked at the engine bay, saw that and like, oh geez, somebody was in here. It probably have some sort of engine damage with these parts like kind of missing. So they slapped engine damage on the listing description. And I'm like, okay, well this car could be a bad car, but let's check it out just in case, you know, we can get to the battery and it fires up. So we get to the car. It's really not that bad. Uh, the It smells good inside. That's the first thing you always got to check. You got to do the smell test with these flood cars. You will know if that car had a lot of water in it just by opening the door and giving it a good whiff. It's probably not healthy, but uh, I did it quite a few times on our little Northeast adventure, but open this one, smell like fresh leather. So I'm like, okay, this is a good sign. The car looks pretty good. It's been sitting there, you know, just for a while at the lot, getting ready to be sold. And the auction was coming up in a week. So I'm like, okay, let's let's get to the battery. It's now or never. So we pulled the emergency release. Oh yeah, I never told you where it actually was for our viewers out there. So it's on the Maserati Gran Turismo. It's behind the driver's seat, right below the passenger seat behind the driver. There's this little loop, this little pull string. You pull that, trunk will pop right open. And then from there, you lift the battery tray, the battery's right there. So sure enough, we saw the little loop, pulled the string, pulled the emergency release, battery's right there. We throw a little jump pack on it, boom, we have life to the car. It's got like 30,000 miles. Everything's working, the seats are working, the radio's starting to kick on, like, which is very unusual for flood cars. Normally stuff starts to not work, the seats don't work, the radio doesn't work, the windows don't work. But this car, everything was working. So we're like, oh my goodness, this could start. Now, it may not be the best idea to start some of these cars in case somehow water got in them or whatnot, but this one we felt confident because the water line only went up to right around the bottom of the door. We're like, okay, how could water have gotten super high up into the engine? So we're like, let's give it a try. Let's try to start this thing. So one, two, three, fire in the hole, turn the key. It, it kind of turned over a little bit. We're like, oh, okay, maybe we don't have all the juice here. We gave it a little more power and reconnected it, turned over again, a little closer, and then boom, third time's a charm. It fired right up and it started to idle great, sounded great. And from there, we're like, wow, okay, this is going to be a huge home run. So we were able to pick it up for final bid was $30,250. Not bad for a car that's worth $75,000 with a clean title, no history. Of course, this car will have a rebuilt title and some flood history, but if you go to show the next buyer that, hey, it ran just fine, like it started right up, we did this and this servicing and it's been good since, you really gotta put a lot of miles on them to prove that the car is, you know, good condition for the future and good for resale, but we plan to do that and it's been holding up perfectly so far. Just needed a new battery and all new fluids and a little annual service and it has been rock solid so far. So that, uh, that was deal number one. And keep in mind, we got numerous deals still coming up, but uh, so far we've purchased two. Deal number two was 2008 911 Turbo also went swimming. Uh, it was just outside New York City. Again, that uh, Newark area, it had quite a bit of quite a bit of water in that uh, area. And this one was no exception. I believe water got as high as around the seats. Still nothing terrible, but definitely doable. And this one, we went against our own advice of going to preview these cars. Believe it or not, we didn't preview this one. But again, I looked at the water line on the door. I looked at the fact that the car was not lighting up. It has no mileage listed, no run and drive status, nothing but we love those on Porsches because same thing, Porsches have a very difficult emergency release system to like get the front trunk open to be able to get to the battery. Once again, the battery is under the front trunk. Front trunk is electronically controlled. So if you're out of power, you can't get to the battery easily. There's a couple emergency ways to do it. One by like giving it power th through the fuse panel, but oftentimes that doesn't work. So once they try that, they're out of luck and they will just send it to auction and say, we can't get to the battery, won't run. We don't know anything about it. And they go dirt cheap. So we bought this, <laughs> we bought this one. And get this, it has a sticker price of around $175,000. Porsche carbon ceramic brakes, sport chrono, the sport seats, custom painted sport back seats, really nice uh, upgraded wheels, the whole nine yards. This thing was well optioned. And uh, we got it for, get this, $28,000. Pretty crazy. I woke up in one morning, I just saw it, and I blind bid without preview, 
I was willing to go up to like 35 grand and uh, here it sold for 28 grand. So that one turned out to be another winner because we just got word from the shop that was working on it, AIM Performance up in uh, New Jersey, and they simply drained the water from the exhaust. They, they claimed 10 gallons of water came out of that car. I assume most of that was in the exhaust, hopefully none in the engine. I think they did say some came out of the engine. So I was a little nervous when they <laughs> said, said that, but luckily they called with a later update that yeah, runs great, starts up, and uh, transmission's good too. And really, it just needs like a seat module and a window regulator, those two things. And I said, okay, no problem, we can tackle that. You know, let, let's ship it. Once again, another huge home run on a flood car. That car, again, probably $75,000 estimated value with a clean title, no history. Now we got it for 28,000. That's nearly, what is that, 60% off just because it uh, went swimming. What's the harm in that? So. It's back up in business now, and we'll be getting that one soon here, documenting on our YouTube channel, JR Garage, posting all sorts of fun videos with these two cars, and hopefully there will be uh, many more on the way. Let's just say my watch list has probably 50 to 100 cars from Hurricane Ida, and some of which we know, once again, are very good cars. We're ready to get bidding on these next upcoming cars. We'll cross our fingers and hope that we'll have a whole little garage of flood cars. We'd like to thank the Ticket Clinic for supporting VinWiki this month. When you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, you're risking points on your license, costly fines, insurance premium increases, and risks of suspension or jail time. So it's more important than ever to have great representation. The Ticket Clinic is a nationwide law firm that can help you fight a ticket no matter where you get it. It's easier than ever to start a relationship with them. You'll just take your ticket, snap a picture of it, and text that picture to 305305. You can also reach them at the link in the description below to thank them for their support of Venwiki and fight your ticket with the Ticket Clinic.